It's my friend said to me that she never met someone who came out as many times as I have. And that hit because that's what life really is. It's going through things, rediscovering things about yourself and coming to terms with that and then being able to tell the world about it. Growing up black was not something that was prevalent for me because I was sad. <laughs> um, I let my sadness kind of take over and rule a lot of the situations that I faced in my life. So I really only started to deal with what it is being a black person in this world very recently, like within the past couple years. The first time I engaged in the self-harming, I was very young, I was around 11 years old, and I felt like it was a coping mechanism to distract myself from feeling sad. Um, it took a really long time to break that habit, and it's still a part of, it's still a process of nurturing, breaking those habits, but to do that, I have to come to terms with feeling sad and addressing why I'm feeling sad and not distract myself from the sadness. I first allowed myself to explore my gender identity <laughs> when I was a little wee girl, which is funny, it, it kind of lines up with when the self-harm started because I was experimenting with girls, but very secretively, knowing that it wouldn't be accepted. Later on in life, I put up a wall in terms of telling, telling people about my sexuality, um, saying that I would be with girls, but I wouldn't date them, and not, that was really me just not accepting myself. I think that also stems back to just the sadness that I felt my entire life not being able to accept it and just feeling that it was normal for me to say, yeah, I can be with girls, but I wouldn't date one because that's not what's accepted from me. Okay, so since I was a young buck, I have been obsessed with being compared to things that are not humans, <laughs> okay? I'm, let me tell you something, These uh, us humans, we are we are very, <laughs> it's, 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 you, don't, um, you almost don't want to identify as one of us, but growing up, I just felt so much life whenever someone was like, oh, you're so long, you look like a lima bean, like, yes, I am a lima bean, or I dyed my eyebrows once and my sister told me I look like an egg, and I was like, yes, I'm serving you egg realness. <laughs> um, I just, I really love to teeter on the line of, of not being what is expected. It is an ongoing process, and I think if there's anything that I've taken from my journey is that it needs to continue to move. I need to be prepared for things to go in any direction. And I think that that in itself with life really represents my gender as well, that it can go in any direction. And I just have to be prepared and willing and open to the experience and the journey.